Hi, my name is Neil Sharp from the Stress Management Society. And I'd like to start by telling you a little bit more about what stress actually is, what it means, what happens to us when we get stressed. We live in an age where you can't turn on a television, pick up a newspaper or a magazine without someone talking about stress. It seems to be such a huge part of our modern existence. But what is it? What happens to us when we get stressed? Why do we have stress? What is the purpose of stress? Well, stress has been around as long as human beings have been around. Nature gave us stress for a very good reason. When our common ancestors, uh, the cavemen that, that surfaced on the plains of East Africa 200,000 years ago, uh, when, when they experienced stress, it was actually a very useful and constructive response because they would have experienced it when they were being attacked by, say, a saber-toothed tiger. And they would use that response as a mechanism to, to ensure they were physically and mentally set up to the best of their abilities to do what's necessary to either fight that tiger, overpower it and save their skin, or to be able to turn and run away to the best of their ability. Hence, the, the, the stress response also being known as the fight or flight response. Literally speaking, your body has gone into a physical state of preparation to allow you to do what's necessary to remove yourself from that situation of stress um, and to save your skin. Now, the, the challenge isn't stress. In fact, stress isn't a problem. Stress is actually a very good thing. If it wasn't for stress, you wouldn't be watching this video. And I wouldn't be here because our whole entire species would be extinct. The reason our species has thrived and become the dominant species on this planet is because we had a, a response such as stress that not only allowed us to survive all of the challenges that our ancestors faced, but to thrive and to, to, to uh, break the boundaries of Africa and, 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 and explore into the rest of the world and actually flourish in the way that we have today. So the challenge isn't that stress exists and that we get stressed. The challenge is that in modern life, most of us aren't attacking or running away from saber-toothed tigers. It's not that we are dealing with challenging and life-threatening situations. In modern life, most of us are getting stressed, sat at a desk in front of a computer, in a car, in a traffic jam, with a work deadline burying us under pressure. And it's in those kind of situations where stress has no constructive use. There is no physical outlet for that response. So we've gone into a state of physical preparation and there's physically nothing for us to do. And that's why stress is becoming so debilitating in modern life. Because we've gone into a state where we're physically prepared for something to happen. And actually what we need is our mental facilities to be functioning efficiently. And what tends to happen in a human being is all the non-essential systems that are required for immediate survival actually begin to shut down when you're in a state of stress. Higher brain function, the parts of your brain that are responsible for lateral thinking, creative thinking, problem solving, actually don't work efficiently when you're stressed. Digestion, you don't need to digest food if you're being attacked by a saber tooth tiger. So again, another system that tends to shut down. And the immune system, you don't need to be worried about bacterias and germs when you're stressed. So once again, the immune system will minimize in its, in its functioning or even shut down altogether, which is why people that are stressed are much more susceptible to illness. So they're more likely to, in the short term, get things like colds, flus, allergies, asthma, eczema, um, digestive conditions, obviously because of the digestion system not functioning efficiently, conditions like irritable bowel syndrome, um, muscular skeletal issues because our muscles tend to tense up when we're stressed. And the top four killers on the planet today are heart disease, diabetes, cancer, and stroke. All of those can be attributed back to stress. In fact, the NHS themselves say that 85% of all serious illnesses can be attributed back to stress. So we can now start to understand that because of the various different ways that our bodies are impacted by stress, that it's starting to, to, to filter into various different areas of our life and preventing us from operating at our best. Stress was always given to us as a short-term state of survival. You've gone into a state which we're expected to be in for not more than a few minutes at a time. Because if you are being attacked by a saber-toothed tiger, realistically, how long is that situation going to last? A few minutes at most. However, most of us are not getting stressed and staying in that state for a few minutes. We are living in that state. We're spending hours, days, weeks, months in a state of stress. And that's where it starts to creep it starts to create serious challenges in our lives. So I'd encourage you all to think about how to recognize when stress manifests itself, either in your life or in your organizations. 
and begin to take steps to minimise its cultural and commercial impacts. If you'd like more information or help, you can contact us at www.stress.org.uk.